Hey, in today's video, I'm talking about the seven root causes of inflammation and autoimmunity. And with all of these causes, none of them really outrank another one. All of them are key contributing factors in driving inflammation, driving autoimmune responses, and all of them need to be considered and addressed if you're trying to heal inflammation or trying to heal autoimmunity. And so let's take a look. First one here that I've got listed, again, no particular order, but leaky gut and low stomach acid. When our digestive system gets compromised from things like not being able to produce enough stomach acid, not being able to produce enough bile from our liver and gallbladder, not being able to produce enough digestive enzymes and having bad bacteria building up in our digestive system, now we start getting large undigested food particles getting into the bloodstream and that drives up inflammation. So if that happens for a very short-term period of time, you might notice it, you might have some discomfort, you might have a little bit of inflammation flare up, but then it gets under control. But if this is happening with every single meal, we're just driving and driving and driving the inflammatory pathways in our body, and we create a, a state of chronic inflammation that can also, depending on your particular genetics, turn into autoimmunity or an autoimmune disease. We're not producing enough stomach acid because we're under stress or maybe we have taken a lot of NSAID medications or heartburn medications that deplete or reduce our ability to produce stomach acid. Perhaps we've gotten older and we've had a bad diet and we've had a lot of stress throughout the course of our life. Aging unsuccessfully over time can cause poor stomach acid production or maybe we have an infection like an H. pylori infection that's stopping our ability to produce stomach acid. Whatever the major cause is, that is going to set us up for chronic inflammatory and autoimmune conditions. Number two is blood sugar imbalances. When our blood sugar gets too high, it creates hyperglycemia. And the, the sugar molecule, the glucose, will actually combine with proteins and create sticky proteins. They trigger oxidative stress and inflammation throughout our body, in particular in the endothelial lining of the blood vessels, damaging the blood vessels. And so when people have hyperglycemia. It drives up inflammation throughout the entire body and reduces because the blood vessels are becoming damaged. So really good blood sugar stability, very important for triggering healing of inflammation and autoimmunity. Number three is trauma. And that trauma could be physical. It could be car accident. It could be you slipped and fell and that caused tissue damage, which triggered inflammation. So we've all experienced some sort of physical trauma. It could also be mental or emotional trauma. All of those things trigger a stress response in the body and they trigger inflammation. So we've got to work to unravel those, deal with those. Obviously, we're always going to have some level of stress. So we really have to develop a positive psychology, right? A growth mindset that allows us to deal with the stressors we're dealing with. That's key for healing. Number four is high toxic load. So we are constantly being bombarded by pesticides, herbicides, by chemicals in our air, water, food, Toxins are everywhere, right? So we're always being exposed. Maybe you've got mold in your home and so you've got mold and mycotoxins. That's a really, really hazardous chemical exposure that is affecting a lot of people. Maybe you've got amalgam fillings, heavy metals in your mouth that are leaching into your bloodstream and into your brain. And so all of these exposures build up, right? And so all of us are being exposed to toxins. We're not going to get rid of toxin exposure, but we need to minimize it. We need to lower the level of toxins that we're being exposed to. Once the level of toxins hits a certain threshold, right, it's going to trigger a lot of inflammation in our body and an inflammatory cascade. So the best thing we can do is reduce our exposure to those toxins and then support our body's natural drainage pathways, making sure that we're peeing and pooping, right, toxins out of our body. That's key sweating them out, things like infrared sauna, exercise, breathing them out. Respiration is a key way that we move those toxins out as well. So reduce exposure and then help improve our body's natural drainage and detoxification pathways. Super key here. Number five, and this is probably the most common, especially in our westernized societies, it's circadian rhythm dysfunction. All of us have experienced this. We've been up late at night. We've been up working or being exposed to blue light, bright lights at night. There's a saying that says malillumination or poor light exposure is to the body what malnutrition is to the body. Light is information to the cells of our body. And so when we're getting the wrong light exposure at the wrong time, that actually tells the cells we're in a dangerous environment. And they go into what we call a cell danger response, which ultimately is going to trigger more inflammation. So it's really key 
that early in the day, we're getting a lot of good sun exposure, right? Or natural light exposure. Even if you just go outside for five minutes, that's going to help your circadian rhythm. It's going to help bring down inflammation in your system. And in the evening, right, trying to get some sort of trying to get out into kind of the, the red light that you'll see with sunset. The types of rays that are coming out, the, the photons that are coming out are, are red and infrared early in the day and late at night. And those are very anti-inflammatory, very good for the mitochondria, set the circadian rhythm, set you up for good sleep. Now, once the sun goes down, you need to make sure that you're blocking blue light. If you're using electronics, watching a TV or whatever it is, make sure you got the blue light blocking glasses, make sure the volume's not too high, Right? You don't want anything that's going to overly stimulate you. Try to get in bed. I would say 11 o'clock at the latest if possible. Right? Obviously, I know some of you guys might be shift workers, things like that. But do your best to try to get in bed before midnight for sure. But you're actually going to secrete the most growth hormone, which signals healing in your body between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. So being in bed early, really key for that. I recommend not working after 9 p.m. And just really allowing your mind and your body to naturally wind down, getting out of blue light, things like that. Super key for setting circadian rhythm. So that's very important. Number six is chronic infections, right? So infections like viral infections in our cells or, you know, what's really common now is seeing a lot of oral infections, maybe gingivitis that hasn't been addressed or root canals that your dentist thought were addressed, but are actually harboring dangerous bacteria that are releasing endotoxins directly into your bloodstream. And the bacteria are constantly releasing endotoxins that are driving up inflammation in the body, wearing down the immune system. Could be gut infections, parasites, candida, or fungal overgrowth in our system. There's a whole wide range of different infections that individuals will deal with, but that has to be addressed as well. And then number seven here, nutrient deficiencies. Maybe you're vitamin D deficient. Maybe you are zinc deficient. Maybe you're magnesium deficient. I only mentioned those three because I see those being the three most common nutrient deficiencies. So we want to make sure that we're addressing that as well, looking at what nutrients we may need more of and supporting those. And so that's really key. And all of these things, when somebody has chronic inflammation, autoimmunity, it's usually not just one of those areas, right? It's usually accumulation, maybe three, four, five, maybe all seven of those areas that are coalescing and creating what we call a high allostatic load. That allostatic load is kind of the pathological pressure on our body, this pressure that's leading us down a route of cell danger response, being stuck in the cell danger response, being stuck in a chronic inflammatory amplifying cycle and triggering perhaps for certain individuals autoimmunity. And that puts us in this pathological state. So we have this high allostatic load from the accumulation of these stressors on the body. And that load is too much for our body's own natural ability to heal, repair, and adapt, right? So our body normally has a certain load on it, but it can adapt to it. It can repair itself, heal, and actually get stronger and more resilient. For example, we think about exercise. Exercise is very stressful on the body. In fact, if you do intense exercise and I take your blood work, right after you do it, we're going to see really high inflammatory levels, real high CRP, different inflammatory biomarkers. But we all know that exercise done appropriately allows us to become stronger, more resilient, more fit, more metabolically flexible, some amazing benefits to it. So the key is how well is our body adapting to the stressors we're under and how well is it then healing and regenerating? And so what we've got to do is work to get the overall allostatic load down so our body can now heal and regenerate. So we want to address all these areas to bring down that overall allostatic load so your body can heal, repair, and function at its best.